ready to go. Okay, thank you, Ignacio. Uh, again, I'm Sven Lindstrom. I'm with the Depart Hawaii Department of Health um, Hazard Evaluation and Emergency Response Office. Um, also uh, work on Department of Defense sites, including muni munitions response sites under our uh, DSAMOA cooperative agreement. Um, next slide, please. Sorry, I'm gonna be rushing through. Again, I have a pretty long presentation. No, so. no it's then you have time, so don't worry. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, unexploded ordnance or UXO are particularly dip difficult contaminants to address because the risk they pose is so difficult to quantify. Uh, in the state of Hawaii, UXO are almost always found at military training sites, either at current military installations or at formerly used defense sites or FUDs. Um, they're most often the remnants of World War II training activity, although some of them are newer. Um, and they're always the responsibility of the federal government and the Department of Defense to clean up. So if the DOD is already cleaning up the UXO, do they even qualify for Brownsfield redevelopment funding? Well, that's what we're hoping to find out. Um, next slide, please. Although uh, the Department of Defense is responsible for managing and cleaning up UXO sites under the DOD Environmental Restoration Program or the DERP, um, the Department of Health through our cooperative agreement uh, with the DOD and under our mandate uh, in our environmental response law to protect human health and the environment has a responsibility to oversee those cleanups. And that's what my job is. Um, initially, we attempted to tackle the issue of munitions response sites like any other chemical contaminated sites. And we scrutinized the DOD sampling for munitions constituents and we compared those findings to our environmental action levels. Um, looking at concentrations uh, based on chronic exposure toxicity hazards um, in order to assess the risk. But what we soon figured out was that munitions constituents are really not a significant concern, a significant concern at most of the munition sites. The real hazard is not chronic, but it's acute. And it's the hazard associated with the potential for a UXO to detonate and kill or maim anyone in the vicinity. Because even though most of the munitions are over 70 years old, they're still just as deadly as they were on the day they were fired. And the amount of disturbance that it may take to set one off is really anybody's guess. And just to make matters a little bit more difficult, the UXO can be really hard to find. Uh, next slide, please. Um, although unexploded ordnance are also uh, a concern at active uh, ranges and installations, today we're gonna focus on um, the formerly used defense sites and uh, one site in particular. Um, we actually have over 120 formerly used defense sites in the state of Hawaii, and over half of those are um, munition sites. Um, that they're uh, MMRP or Military Munitions Response Program sites. Um, so there is a likelihood of finding UXO at those sites. The US Army Corps of Engineers is responsible for cleaning up FUDS munitions response sites um, following the CERCLA process. Uh, you can see the steps of the circular process um, on the right side of this slide. The circular process was developed to identify areas of high concentration of chemical contaminants that may pose chronic and sometimes acute exposure hazards to site users. Circular was not designed to address risks associated with UXO occasionally blowing up. Consequently, the Army Corps, um, following the circular process as best they can, designs a remedial investigation or, or an RI to determine the nature and extent of UXO at the site. They basically try to identify what they call concentrated munitions use areas and non-concentrated munitions use areas or CMUA and non-CMUA. And then determine what types of UXO may be present, uh, how big are the bombs that are, are present. If an area has a high enough concentration of munitions and explosives of concern are MEC, which is sort of another word for UXO, and munitions debris, then they will likely conduct a remedial action across the site. So that's sort of this, you know, the, the uh, last step of the circle process. In fact, uh, let's go to the next slide here. If it, can we go to the next slide, please? Thank you. If an area is determined to be non-CMUA, then the Army Corps of Engineers may just decide that they're done. But um, what is a non-CMUA? Is there still a potential for unexploded ordnance to be present 
at a non-CMUA? Yes, there is. Uh, in general, the cutoff that the Department of Defense uses is less than 0 0.1 MEC per acre. So they take the data from their RI investigation and they statistically calculate whether there's a likelihood of finding unexploded ordnance, uh, whether the, uh, the likelihood is less than 10, one UXO per 10 acres. And if so, then they designate it a low risk or sometimes they call it a negligible risk. And in some agricultural areas, they may even reduce that frequency to 0 0.5 mech per acre or one UXO for every two acres as they're cut off. So you can see even in these low risk and negligible risk areas, there's still a potential for encountering unexploded ordnance. Now to be fair, they usually agree to institute land use controls or LUX to further reduce the risk of um, exposure. But in most cases, the risk can never be reduced to zero. So there's always what H2H has identified as residual risk at UXO sites. Um, the image you can see here on your left are the results of a remedial investigation which identifies the concentrated munitions use areas. And um, as you can see from the middle image at the bottom, in this case, the Army Corps decided to break up this MRS, this munitions response site, and only conduct a remedial action on two portions of the site. Those are the areas in yellow. So the question then arises, if, what if you do do a surface and subsurface remedial action following the circle process? Then do you eliminate the residual risk? Well, again, unfortunately, no. An RA will certainly reduce the risk of exposure significantly, but there are limits to the technology, and those limits are increased by the unique geology and the difficult topography of the islands. The high iron content in our soil creates background noise that limits the depth of detection with the modern metal detectors. The smaller mech items like a 37 millimeter high explosive mortar round, the depth of detection can be as little as 10 inches beneath the surface. So anything buried deeper can be missed entirely. And larger munitions um, can reliably be detected only to, down to about three feet. So there's almost always a residual risk, even when everything else goes 100% right. Okay, next slide please, Ignacio. And that's the problem with the unexploded ordnance. Unlike a uh, risk associated with chronic exposure to chemicals, where if the concentration in an area is determined to be low enough, the hazard can be reduced to basically nothing. It only takes a single encounter with a single unexploded ordnance to result in death. Remediation can reduce the likelihood of an encounter and educational land use controls can help uh, by making people more aware of their surroundings thereby reducing the risk even a bit more, but the residual risk remains. A one in a million chance encounter with an unexploded ordinance could be fatal. And depending on the location, the collateral damage from that could be enormous. Next slide, please. So at the former Waikoloa Maneuver Area on the Big Island, um, it's a formerly used defense site. The HERE office developed an area-wide environmental hazard management plan to provide guidance for safer development and management of properties where residual risk from unexploded ordnance cannot be eliminated. The Waikolo Maneuver Area is one of the largest FUDS MMRP sites in the nation, and it's certainly the largest one in Hawaii, having just been increased to over 200,000 acres. In addition to being littered with unexploded ordnance from World War II, the Waikolo Maneuver Area is also the home to two fairly large towns. Waimea with a population of over 9,000 and Waikoloa Village with a population of over 6,000, as well as a, about a half a dozen um, resorts along the coast. Um, if you're curious about the maps you're looking at, the top left shows the island of Hawaii with the red rectangle, um, which delineates the area where the Waikoloa Maneuver Area is located. Uh, the larger image in the center shows the former boundary of the Waikoloa Maneuver Area. And each little star on that map indicates an unexploded ordinance that have been found so far uh, by the Army Corps of Engineers since about uh, 2000. The top right purple area is the um, expanded Waikolo Maneuver Area boundary as of 2019. Um, so that was when it expanded from about 120,000 acres to almost 220,000 acres. And the lower right is a map from 1945 that shows six separate heavy artillery firing ranges 
bounded by the two main highways, Mamalahoa and Kavai High Road. And um, right in the center of those six firing range is the, uh, the town of Waikoloa Village. In 2014, the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development singled out the Waikoloa Maneuver Area and declared that in accordance with the National Environmental Policy Act, HUD could not provide funding for environment, affordable housing and infrastructure in the Waikoloa Maneuver Area due to the UXO contamination until and unless the state of Hawaii first declared the land safe for development. Next slide, please. In response, the Hawaii Department of Health prepared our Area-Wide Environmental Hazard Management Plan, or AEHMP, for the Waikolo Maneuver Area in the spring of 2019. The, of 2019. the AEHMP provides safety guidelines for development in the Waikolo Maneuver Area and guidance for mitigating residual risk at properties within the Waikolo Maneuver Area. The AEHMP can be used at any site within the Waikolo Maneuver Area, regardless of whether the Army Corps has conducted their circle of cleanup action or not. We also developed a process to issue conditional no further action with institutional controls designations to a handful of the sites where the Army had completed the circle process and issued a remedial action report in order to provide HUD with the document required to release their funding. The conditional NFA with ICs requires that the property owner follow our area-wide environmental hazard management plan guidelines. Next slide, please. Unfortunately, two crucial steps in the AHMP guidance to, uh, to mitigate uh, residual risk can be burdensome expenses, particularly for individual residential property owners, but also for state and county agencies on a tight budget. These are number one, the requirement for unexploded ordinance construction support. Construction support is a Department of Defense and UXO industry term for a risk mitigation activity that requires a certified UXO contractor to prepare an anomaly avoidance plan and be on site during all excavation activities prior to construction. Essentially, this is a confirmation assessment of the previous work done by the Army Corps of Engineers to address the residual risk. Uh, number two, on large scale projects, they need an environmental consultant to prepare a site-specific EHMP to plan out how the project will comply with the AEHMP guidelines, both during and post-construction as part of the long-term mitigation effort. The HERE Office has tried in vain to get the Army Corps to include a UXO construction support in their land use controls for managing residual risk. Uh, but for now, this and any other cost of compliance with our AEHMP guidance must be borne by the property owner. And since the guidance is not mandatory for most properties, and in many cases, the only owners simply opt not to follow it in order to save a few bucks, at least those who can. Sites that require a conditional NFA with ICs in order to receive HUD funding or HUD back loans, such as Hawaiian homelands property, must comply with the AHMP. And since these are properties that have already completed the circular process, the Army Corps is through with them, except for their five-year reviews. So the owner must pay the cost of managing and avoiding the residual risks themselves and of complying with the AHMP. Next slide, please. Now that we have the AHMP in place, and we know of properties in need of HUD funding to develop affordable housing in the Waikoloa Maneuver Area, we're looking into the option of applying for a 104K coalition grant from the EPA to provide additional support to our community partners. We're hopeful that such funding will not only encourage compliance with the area-wide environmental hazard management plan, but also provide us a path forward at areas of Waikoloa where we have hit an impasse with the Army Corps of Engineers in terms of closing out the site. Um, next slide, please. That's it. I think I kept it under my time. Um, so check back with us next year to see what kind of progress we've made. Um, and if you're interested in learning more about our area-wide environmental hazard management plan or the HUD notices regarding uh, Waikoloa, you can, you can see them here, uh, or some links. And you're also welcome to reach out to me anytime if you have more questions. So thanks again for your time. Back to you, Ignacio.